When people talk about facial aesthetics, the conversation usually starts and ends with the jawline. But the truth is, the jaw is only half the equation. The real foundation of facial structure is the maxilla, the central bone of the mid-face that supports your eyes, your nose, your cheeks, and even affects how your jaw is perceived. If this bone is well-developed and properly positioned, the face appears balanced, youthful, and defined, often without needing any extreme angles or filters. But if it's recessed or underdeveloped, that's when you start to see issues like tired eyes, flat cheeks, long mid-faces, and weak jaw projection, even in people with otherwise good genetics. In this breakdown, we're going deeper than surface-level tips, we're going straight to the anatomical core of facial aesthetics. In the world of looks maxing, everyone obsesses over the mandible, the jawline, the chin, the gonial angle. But what's rarely mentioned is the structure that actually frames the entire mid-face and makes those lower features even matter, the maxilla. This bone doesn't just affect your appearance. It defines the overall harmony of your face. Eye support, cheek prominence, nose projection, even the length of your philtrum. All of that traces back to how your maxilla developed. If you're overlooking it, you're missing the central axis of facial aesthetics. In fact, many people who think they have a weak jaw actually have a recessed mid-face, and that's a completely different issue. Once you understand this, your whole perception of facial structure changes. The maxilla is more than just your upper jaw. It's the central scaffold of the mid-face. Anatomically, it's a paired bone that connects directly to your nose, cheeks, eyes, and palate. It forms the base of the eye sockets, supports the nasal structure, anchors the upper teeth, and builds the front of the face. Because it interfaces with over 10 other bones in the skull, any underdevelopment here creates a domino effect, collapsing the entire facial structure inward. Aesthetically, the maxilla gives the face its vertical and horizontal balance. It's not a surface feature. It's the core of how your face is built. The maxilla sits at the center of the face, both structurally and visually. It connects to the nasal bones above, the zygomatic bones on each side, the frontal bone at the top, and the palatine bones behind. Its position determines the angle of your mid-face, how far forward or downward your features develop. It also forms the floor of the orbits, meaning it directly supports the eyes and lower eyelids. If this structure is too far back or angled incorrectly, it affects everything. Under eye support, nasal shape, cheek definition, and even how your upper lip sits. Understanding its central placement is key to seeing how one bone can influence your entire appearance. One of the biggest visual markers of an attractive face is depth. That 3D structure where the cheeks project, the eyes are supported, and the face looks full, not flat. That depth begins with maxillary projection. A forward-growing maxilla pushes the mid-face outward, supporting the soft tissue, lifting the under eyes, and creating strong cheek contours. On the other hand, when the maxilla is recessed or grows downward, the face looks compressed, shallow cheeks, longer mid-face, hollow eyes. This is why someone can have decent individual features, but the face still feels off. There's no depth. Maxillary projection is the structural foundation that makes the rest of your features stand out properly. The under eye area is one of the first places people notice fatigue, aging, or weakness in facial structure. And the maxilla is a huge part of that. It forms the entire floor of the eye socket and contributes to the infraorbital rim, the lower edge that supports the eyeball and lower eyelid. If the maxilla is well-developed and positioned forward, it gives strong under-eye support, tight skin, shallow tear troughs, and no scleral show. But if it's underdeveloped or tilted downward, the support drops. That's when we see hollow under-eyes, deep grooves, and that tired look even in young people. This is why eye aesthetics aren't just about skin or fat. They're deeply tied to bone structure. And the maxilla is the foundation. The maxilla doesn't just sit under the nose. It actually forms its entire base and sides. The nasal aperture, the angle of the tip, the projection of the bridge, all of it is anchored on the maxilla. 
If the maxilla is well developed, especially in the anterior region, the nose appears naturally lifted, projected, and proportionate. But when the maxilla is recessed or downward grown, the nasal base collapses. The nose starts to look wider, flatter, and droopier, especially from the side profile. This is why people with mid-face deficiency often have what's called a plunging nasal tip. It's not just a nose issue, it's a bone issue. Fixing nasal aesthetics often starts by addressing the maxilla first, not the cartilage. The maxilla doesn't just affect the mid-face, it plays a major role in how the upper lip looks and sits. A forward-positioned maxilla supports the soft tissue around the mouth, keeping the philtrum short and the upper lip full and slightly projected. This creates a youthful, lifted appearance, the kind of upper lip that holds volume naturally without fillers. But when the maxilla is recessed or has poor forward growth, the philtrum elongates. The upper lip flattens, and the area between the nose and mouth looks stretched and aged. This is one of the reasons people seek lip lifts or upper lip filler. They're compensating for what's actually a skeletal issue. A well-developed maxilla creates balance between the nose, lips, and chin. And that balance is a key marker of facial attractiveness. This might surprise a lot of people, but your jawline doesn't exist in isolation. The way it looks is heavily affected by the position of your maxilla. When the maxilla grows forward, it brings the entire mid-face into alignment, allowing the mandible, your lower jaw, to sit properly. The result? A cleaner jawline, better gonial angle, and a more powerful profile. But when the maxilla is recessed or downward tilted, it forces the jaw to compensate. The mandible rotates backward, the chin tucks in, and the jaw looks weak, even if the bone itself is solid. This is what's called relative jaw weakness. It's not that your jaw is small, it's that the midface is collapsing backward. So if you're chasing a better jawline, don't forget the structure above it. It's all connected. When we talk about a balanced, attractive face, it's all about proportion. And the maxilla sits at the center of that equation. Ideally, the face is divided into three equal vertical thirds, the forehead, the midface, and the lower face. The maxilla controls the entire middle third, from the eyes to the base of the nose. When this area is the right length and properly projected, the face looks symmetrical, compact, and youthful. But when the maxilla is underdeveloped, that middle third becomes too long or too flat, breaking the harmony. This throws off the golden ratio, the angle of facial features, and even the smile arc. You can't fix this with fillers or skin treatments. The proportions are built on bone. There are some very specific facial features that almost always point to an underdeveloped or recessed maxilla. And once you know them, you start noticing them everywhere. First, the mid-face looks flat or sunken, especially around the cheeks and under the eyes. The under-eye area appears hollow or dark, and scleral show becomes visible. That's when too much white is exposed below the iris. Next, the philtrum. The area between the nose and upper lip tends to look long and stretched, while the upper lip lacks support and appears thin or curled inward. The nose may also seem wide at the base or droopy at the tip because the underlying maxilla isn't holding it up properly. None of these features are random. They all trace back to weak mid-face structure, and fixing them starts with understanding the root cause, the bone. Maxillary development isn't just about genetics. It's also shaped by how we use our face during critical growth years. One of the biggest factors is mouth breathing. When the tongue sits low and the mouth stays open, it disrupts the natural pressure that helps the maxilla grow forward and upward. Chewing also plays a huge role. A soft, modern diet doesn't stimulate the bones and muscles of the face the way tougher foods do. Then there's tongue posture. If the tongue doesn't rest against the roof of the mouth, the mid-face loses its upward growth signal. Yes, genetics set the potential, but habits during childhood and adolescence decide how far you actually reach that potential. So when we see someone with great mid-face structure, we're often looking at the result of function, not just DNA. 
Maxillary development isn't just about genetics. It's also shaped by how we use our face during critical growth years. One of the biggest factors is mouth breathing. When the tongue sits low and the mouth stays open, it disrupts the natural pressure that helps the maxilla grow forward and upward. Chewing also plays a huge role. A soft, modern diet doesn't stimulate the bones and muscles of the face the way tougher foods do. Then there's tongue posture. If the tongue doesn't rest against the roof of the mouth, the midface loses its upward growth signal. Yes, genetics set the potential, but habits during childhood and adolescence decide how far you actually reach that potential. So when we see someone with great mid-face structure, we're often looking at the result of function, not just DNA. This is the big question. Can you actually improve your maxilla after puberty? The honest answer, bone growth slows dramatically after adolescence, especially in the mid-face. So no, you can't fully remodel your maxilla naturally as an adult. But that doesn't mean you're powerless. If you're younger, techniques like proper tongue posture and nasal breathing, often called mewing, may offer subtle improvements over time. For adults, it's about working with your structure, maximizing your appearance through posture, body fat levels, dental alignment, and in some cases, medical interventions like orthotropics or surgery. The key is knowing what's bone and what's soft tissue, and not wasting time chasing surface fixes when the issue runs deeper. You don't need a perfect maxilla, but you do need to understand it to optimize what you've got. Out of all the bones in the face, the maxilla has the greatest influence on how we look, and yet, it's the most overlooked. It's not just one feature, it affects everything. Your eye support, cheek definition, nasal structure, lip position, and even how your jawline is perceived. The maxilla is the keystone of facial aesthetics. If you understand its role, you stop chasing isolated features and start seeing your face as a system, one where structure, symmetry, and depth all work together. This is the shift that separates basic looks-maxing advice from real anatomical strategy. So, whether you're optimizing what you have or learning how to guide future development, it all begins here, with the bone that builds the face.